one of the most famous haunted houses in London, known as Berkeley Square or the Hell House, is notorious for ghost sightings, and some believe that there might just be something else, something even more terrifying than restless spirits, roaming these halls. Ever since the 1840s there have been stories about an unknown horror lurking in the upper floors of this house. Some believe that this thing is nothing more than a violent ghost, and others believe that it's some sort of unknown paranormal abomination. In the 1840s, a paranormal skeptic named Sir Robert accepted a challenge of spending the night on the second story. Although Robert didn't believe he was in any type of danger, he still armed himself with a pistol and a candle, and he was told to yank the bell if he felt that he was in danger or if anything strange was going on. And a little after midnight the landlord was awoken from his sleep by the bell ringing. Then just a couple of seconds later, he heard Robert screaming, and the sounds of his screams echoing throughout the house was just terrifying. Then he heard gunshots, so the landlord bolted up the stairs to see what was going on. Then he saw Robert huddled in the corner with his smoking pistol in hand, and as the landlord was calling his name, Robert would not respond, and when he saw Robert's terrified and frozen-like face, he knew that he was dead. And after a long investigation, it appeared that Sir Robert died of fear. Then in 1943, two down on the luck sailors named Martin and Blunden decided to spend the night in the now abandoned house. And the two sailors found a nice dry room upstairs and lit a fire, then tried to get some much needed rest. But Blunden had a very hard time falling asleep as this old house was making a lot of cracking noises and he felt a little scared as this was a very creepy house. But he knew that these sounds or just from this house settling. But as he was staring at the door, he saw that it somehow was slowly opening, and this didn't seem to be caused by the wind or any sort of draft, so we thought that there might just be someone else here. So we woke up Martin, then they both heard something rather strange. It's as if something that was very wet was dragging its way across the floor, and this odd sound was getting closer and closer. So Martin decided to go have a look. Then he saw something that he later described as hideous, just something too awful for the human mind to comprehend. Then this abomination sprang towards Blunden, and it started wrapping itself around his throat, just choking the life out of him. So Martin just took off screaming, and luckily, he found a police officer patrolling the neighborhood. And after hearing Martin's story, the police officer thought that this man was insane, but nevertheless, he decided to go investigate. And to his surprise, he found Blunden's body in the basement, and his neck was broken and his eyes were popping right out of its head. Now many believed that Martin murdered his friend and Sir Robert simply died of a heart attack. But over the years, there have been a lot more sightings and stories within this house, making us all wonder, could there actually be some sort of evil unknown entity haunting Berkeley Square? All throughout England, there are legends of screaming skulls and today, we will talk about one of the most famous of these cases. In 1695, a man named Mr. Piney was banished to the West Indies for supporting a duke. And not too long after his banishment, he became a very successful businessman and was able to return back to England. But Mr. Piney did not return alone. He also brought back with him one of his black slaves. And not too long after the slave arrived, he got very ill and on his deathbed, he made one last request. The slave asked Mr. Piney if he would send his body back to his native home, and Mr. Piney agreed, but the promise was never kept. Instead, he was buried in a local churchyard not too far away from Mr. Piney's manor, and that night, people started to hear moans and screams, just awful noises, and the townsfolk were wondering where the heck were these ungodly sounds coming from. And after a little investigating, they were convinced that it was coming from the slave's grave, and the next day they told Mr. Piney that he needed to remove the body. Now some believe that after this event, Mr. Piney did ship his slave's corpse back to where he promised he would, but for some reason he kept the skull and locked it away within his manor. And over the years, there have been several attempts at removing the skull from the house, but they all ended up in failure. Every time a new owner would try to bury or just try to get rid of the skull, the townsfolk would hear screaming and the owner of the manor would be forced to place the skull back into his home. One very famous account happened when one of the owners was sick of having the skull within his house, so he threw it in a nearby pond, and that night the residents within the community heard just awful, terrifying screaming coming from the pond, and yet again they forced the owner to retrieve it 
and place it back into the house. Then in 1960s, a writer by the name of Eric Marple spent a night in this house right next to the school just to see what would happen. And he said that he didn't hear or witness anything unusual, but he did experience one of the worst nightmares he had ever had in his life. And he left first thing in the morning. Now what's really interesting about the Screaming Skulls phenomena is all throughout England, there are stories and legends in nearly every county involving a screaming skull. And the outcome is always the same. If these skulls ever leave their homes or their resting place, the skulls will start to scream or cry or moan. And only by bringing the skull back to where it wants to be, will it finally stop. There is a very strange case that happened in 1981 in the city of Boston when police started to receive tons of reports about men that were dressed up as clowns harassing children. And these clowns or men were seen driving a black van near elementary schools. And these clowns would ask the children if they wanted any candy or toys. Then they would try to get these kids to follow them or to enter their van. In one case, one of these clowns was completely naked from the waist down. Now when these children got home, they told their parents, and of course their parents were furious and scared so they called the police. And the police did take these reports very seriously, and they put their best men on the case, and even the school district got involved, and they told their principals within this area to warn these kids about these clowns. And over the next couple of weeks, more and more reports just kept coming in about these clowns harassing children, and now they were coming in all from over Boston and even the surrounding regions. Now the police were patrolling these schools and looking all over for these men and this van, but they just couldn't seem to find them. Eventually the police believed that these kids were just making up these stories and some believed the mass hysteria was to blame because not one adult had seen these clowns or saw a black van fitting the description. And this was very odd considering the whole city was looking for them. So these clowns had come to be known as phantoms as most believe that they didn't exist. And over the years throughout the United States, there has been more sightings of these clowns. And the sightings do seem to happen in clusters, and they usually last for about a week or two. And if this was the work of perverted men that should be in jail, I am very thankful that these kids were smart enough to run away. There is a Toys R Us in Sunnyvale, California that is believed to be haunted. In fact, this ghost is so famous that there have been many articles published about it. And this haunting has even been on popular TV shows such as That's Incredible. Even Hollywood horror movie writers have spent the night in this Toys R Us hoping to come face to face with this ghost. A senior female employee known as O'Brien has been working here for over 18 years and she told reporters that she doesn't believe in ghosts, although she has seen her fair share of unexplainable phenomena that should turn skeptics into full blown believers. Such as she constantly hears her name being called. But when she turns around, there is no one there. O'Brien also says that the toys, the books, and the dolls seem to be able to move on their own, and she has even witnessed the swings move all by themselves. One famous encounter happened one night when the staff was waxing the floor, and a teddy bear kept appearing on the aisle, and after they put it back, it would magically reappear again on the next aisle. And women are afraid to go into the bathroom alone, as they believe that this ghost follows them in there and starts to play with the faucets. Now the employees and the customers don't believe that this ghost is evil, as nothing bad or demonic has ever happened. They believe that this spirit is very friendly and very playful as it loves to call names, move things, and just play modest tricks on you. The manager said in a recent interview that this ghost is great for business as teenagers, adults, and just people from all over come here hoping to experience something supernatural. So if you ever visit Northern California, make sure to put this Toys R Us on your to-do list and please let us know if you too experience anything paranormal. Until next time, this is Paranormal Junkie. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned.